Hello everyone, welcome to Ace Online. A very good evening and uh, today we will discuss the current affairs of today's and yesterday's. So usually we did not have sessions on Sundays, but because of other work yesterday there was no session. So we will cover uh, the current affairs of yesterday's as well as today's in the today's session. Okay, I hope you are all ready uh, so that you know, uh, I'll just confirming with yes, yeah. So today the articles that we are going to cover are Hydrogen fuel cell technology. This is from science and technology part and very very important We will see how it works and the facts related to that which we need to remember for exam And then we will see what is GDP as well as GVA difference and I will uh, also discuss about The difference between GDP at factor cost GDP at basic prices and GDP at market price So there are lot of confusions among the students about these three things so I'll also briefly discuss and uh, why we are taking this article. There was some difference, I mean huge difference between GVA and GDP uh, which was reported in the newspapers. So we will see what is the basics and then we will also see what, what happened between these two. Okay, next the uh, next article is Paruveta Utsavam. So this is, this was a festival, a tribal festival declared as a state festival by Andhra Pradesh uh, yesterday. So we are taking up this, uh, we will briefly see that as well. And then. Pradhan Mantri Janjati Adivasi Nyaya Maha Abhiyan. So this is a new scheme which was already launched but there were some challenges in implementation. An article in Hindu was reported yesterday, right? So we will see what is the, uh, you know, basics about this and what is the objective, what are all the facts associated with it. Next is corporate tax. This is from economics. So why we have taken this article? The uh, finance minister of India, Nirmala Sitaramanji, has announced that India was able to attract a lot of investments because of lowering the corporate tax. We will understand from very basic level what is corporate tax and why finance minister has announced this. Next one, a new organization, National Urban Cooperative Finance and Development Cooperation Limited was launched by uh, Ministry of Cooperatives. So we will see what is that as well. And then there is an animal which is related to environment, Hangul, which is, are also, which is also called as Kashmir stag. Okay, so this is a sta state animal of Jammu Kashmir. We will see the details about this hangul, the animal. So environment related sp species is very, very important for our exams. And then open network for digital commerce. Some organization FPOs has joined this. We will see in detail about this article as well. And finally, Swachata Green Leaf Rating Initiative. This also we will see. Okay. So there are two, three facts and finally we will also solve some questions after, I mean from this article itself we are solving. So if you are clearly understanding this, you will be able to solve those questions, right? So without delay, let's start the session for today. First one, the hydrogen fuel cell technology. Why we have taken this article for discussion? So in Indian Express, uh, we all know we have just uh, discussed this in the last session as a fact that India's first indigenously developed. That is indigenously means India itself has developed without help of any other countries. So indigenously developed hydro fuel cell ferry at Tutikoran. So Prime Minister has launched this two days back. Now we will see what actually is uh, fuel cell technology, how it works and what are the important facts to be remembered for our exam. Okay. And this vessel was made by or manufactured by Cochin Shipyard Limited. These facts are also important, okay? So who, who made this and all will also be asked in the exam, right? So before seeing the features of the ship, we need to understand what actually is hydrogen fuel cell technology. The basic aim or the basic mechanism of this fuel is it converts chemical energy. Chemical means which have a reaction, right? So it converts chemical energy into electric energy. That is the very basic uh, you know mechanism or the objective of fuel cell now how it works Understand here listen carefully There are two electrodes right one is anode which is Negatively charged and then there is a cathode which is positively charged Understanding mechanism is important else you will not uh, remember the fact so try to understand the process how it works and then factual things you will be easily remembered okay so there are two uh, electrodes one is anode and one is cathode okay so this through this anode hydrogen fuel or hydrogen gas is sent right so it generates certain electrons after 
hitting this anode and then oxidizer such as oxygen is sent to this cathode. So this is in a closed loop. So there is some air right within this closed loop. This hydrogen fuel which uh, touches anode and then release electrons will be reacted with this oxidizer. So hydrogen and oxygen will react in the in this uh, whole fuel cell. So it provides electric discharge, it provides electrical energy, okay? But each cell, this fuel cell uh, is, you know, generates a very little amount of electricity. But the mechanism is that we are going to attach a lot of fuel cells. That's why the electric energy is in very huge amount, right? So just understand the mechanism that there are two electrodes and then in between there is an electrolyte which enables the reaction. And this is uh, hydrogen gas is reacted with the oxygen plus and negative. So it converts into H2O. Water is released. Okay. So this is in terms of uh, beyond electricity, water is also released from this reaction. Right. So this is the working mechanism of fuel cell. And the uh, energy released is or the electricity released is direct current. This is also very, very important. It is not an indirect current. Rather, it is directly uh, you know, the direct current is released. Now, what are the advantages? Why we are promoting these fuel cells? There are certain important uh, outcomes when we are using these fuel cells. Those are all very, very important for our exam, right? So they does not emit any carbon dioxide. Usually, usually uh, if you are using coal or any other combustion engines, there is a lot of carbon dioxide and that is leading to greenhouse gases, right? So uh, that is leading to the climate change issues. That's why this fuel cells will not emit any carbon dioxide. It only emits water, right? So th there is no pollutant at all. There, is, there are no pollutant at all in this fuel cell reactions. That's why not only India, across the world, we are trying to replace the electric electricity generation using the fuel cells, right? Even if you are using the batteries, normal batteries, you know, in clocks and many other... Uh, you know, certain uh, electronic goods, we are using the batteries. In that also, there is a reaction where there is a little amount of carbon dioxide is released. The energy is stored and whenever we are using it, there is a slight emission of pollutants. So there is no such elements which are unwanted for our climate are released from the fuel cells. Also, their operation efficiency is much higher. That means they can generate more energy in a given time and also they can work for longer periods. These fuel cells can work for longer periods. So as these are all having lot of positives, not only in climate, but also in efficiency. Uh, I mean, the countries across the world are trying to replace the conventional energy with the fuel cells, right? So this fuel cell was used in this ship, right? So in this ship, the, the fuel cells were used in a big manner, hydrogen was provided, right? So that's why this is a clean technology. That the, This is the first clean technology ship that is being generated in India, right? Now, we need to know also the, some facts related to this ship. This is a 20 meter long uh, ship. So the total length is around uh, 24 meters, right? And it can accommodate 50 people at a time. See, there are certain facts also asked in the exam. Consider the first, for, uh, first, uh, you know, green hydrogen fuel ferry in India. So something like that they may ask in the exam. So you need to know the features as well. Also, the vessels run on hydrogen fuel. So they will be carrying the lot of hydrogen cylinders, approximately 40 cylinders hydrogen, because in fuel cell they need hydrogen and then oxygen, oxidizer, so that it will promote, it will react chemically and then generate the electricity. So that's why they need to carry the hydrogen, uh, uh, what you call cylinders, to continuously react it. And it can carry for eight hours. So it can travel for eight hours continuously, which is a significant amount for ferry. The local tourism can be promoted. Meanwhile, the greenery, green uh, climate elements are also being included in this ferry, right? So this is uh, the facts about it. So what we have learned from this article, the first uh, India's first indigenously developed hydrofuel ferry was launched in Tutikor in Chennai, right? Uh, Vivo Chidambaram Pillai port. And then we have seen the features and working nature of fuel cell. Finally, we have seen advantages and the details about the ferry as well. Any doubts in this article? Uh, do you guys have any doubt in this? You can ask. Next, important article from economy. 
you might have seen in news uh, if you are following even uh, whether in social media or in newspapers the government has claimed that there is a significant jump in gdp gdp means see certain students who are learning the basics might be confused those who are already in preparation may not feel difficult but gdp means the number of units number of units produced in economy that can be tomatoes that can be shoes that can be pens everything and multiply it by the respective prices for example pen is 10 rupees tomato is 5 rupees so per kg so you can multiply everything and you will get the total production in terms of value like amount only it is in, in terms of amount only how much we are producing in an economy that is gdp that is in terms of value only as of now it is around 3 320 lakh crores lakh crores okay in rupees so the total production india is producing every year is approximately 320 lakh crores this is gdp okay now uh, this is released by every quarter so for every year it will be calculated and within one year there are four quarters right so for every three months also it is being released so we will see what is the con i mean we have seen the context there is a significant jump but there is a criticism that because some elections are coming, you uh, there was some uh, exaggerated figure uh, was put forwarded. So that that the criticism was there from some economists. Okay, we will see what is the criticism, why uh, there was a difference and all. Before that, let's understand the difference between GDP and GVA. Okay, also G GDP is can be calculated at three levels. As I said, GDP is nothing but total production made in the economy in a year. Okay, it can be calculated per month, per quarter also. That is not a, uh, an issue. GDP can be calculated at three levels. At factor cost. Okay, GDP at factor cost. This includes just the prices without any taxes. So for example, I am a producer. I have uh, produced one pen. And someone has produced some remote. So just multiply it by the cost of production without any tax. I need to pay taxes also to the government, but those are not included. Right? And we have a two types of taxes. Understand here. Two type of taxes we have. One is production tax. Understand here, this is very, very important. Many students keeps confusing. Production tax and product tax. Okay, we have two types of taxes, production tax and product tax. Production taxes means even before producing the goods, that is pen or remote, I need to pay certain taxes to the government. Those include stamp duties, registration fee, right? So whatever the registration or transactions being happened before starting the business, those are all taxes are included in the production taxes. So this is a tax paid even before producing the goods, that is production taxes paid by private entities to the government. And next one is product tax. This means the tax being produced per goods after production also, after producing the goods also, I need to pay some other tax. So those are called as product taxes. So GDP at factor cost means the total GDP, that is the calculation, even before paying product tax or production taxes, there is no tax at all when you are calculating GDP at factor cost. There are no taxes. The total amount, the cost that I occurred or others occurred throughout the economy that is called as GDP at factor cost. Now, there is one more thing. GDP at basic prices. See, these are all important asked in the exams if you are writing and economy is part of your uh, syllabus. Even current affairs also they will ask uh, uh, the data and also you need to know the basics. GDP at basic prices means the total cost of production before paying taxes, this GDP, this GDP plus the production taxes. Not product taxes, but before starting the production, I need to pay certain taxes, isn't it? So this GDP at factor cost plus the production tax, that is GDP at basic prices. Next one comes the GDP at market price. Market price. So this is the total amount produced including the actual production cost and then production tax and also the product tax. So all are included and finally before reaching to the consumer you are paying this price. 
right? So this is the total GDP at market price which we are following currently, okay? So if someone is saying it is a GDP, that means it is a fact, uh, sorry, market price. Earlier we were, before 2014, we were following GDP at factor cost, but now we are following it as a GDP at market price, okay? So I hope this is clear at production taxes and then product taxes and then fact, GDP at factor cost, GDP at basic price and GDP at market price, okay? So these are all the things. Now, we need to understand what is GDP and GVA. That is also need to be understood, okay? GVA is nothing but, gross value addition is nothing but, this is one. GDP at basic price. GVA means GDP at basic price. So gross value addition, right? Sometimes this is also referred as factor cost. You can take this one as well. Even before production tax also, it is it is actual value of production, right? So whatever the production, 10 pence I have produced, multiplied by 5 rupees. So 50 rupees I have produced as a company. So you can directly take this itself, not even basic prices earlier we were taking. So GVA means what actual value before paying the taxes and all, okay? Now, let someone tell me the answer. Someone tell me the answer from whoever are listening. GVA means GDP at factor cost, okay? And GDP means GDP at the market price. That means the taxes are also included in GDP, but in GVA, tax are not included. Now, there is a discrepancy. 8.4% of GDP growth was there in quarter, but in terms of GVA, it is only 6%. GVA is 6% and GDP is 8.4%. Why there is a difference between these two? So where this 2.4% has gone or has uh, come? Can someone tell me the answer for this? GDP equal to GVA plus product tax, I mean product taxes minus subsidies. Government will also give some subsidies to the companies, not only taking the taxes, sometimes to encourage the production. So they will also give subsidies. So that is being net. What taxes they are paying and what subsidies government is giving. So now tell me what is, why there is a difference between these two, GVA and GDP. It should be equal, but there is a discrepancy. So that means what? Anyone? Okay, let me go ahead because here the there was a high taxes collected by government or there may be reduction in subsidies. Let us discuss it again. There is a discrepancy between GDP and GVA. So this is higher than the GVA. I mean, there is a discrepancy between these two. That means what? So this product taxes, for example, we can say 100 rupees of GVA and 120 rupees plus tax minus subsidies. So here GDP is increasing and GVA was staying same. So that means what? Taxes are increasing. Subsidies are reducing and product taxes, the taxes are increasing. That's why GDP is increasing. GVA there is no change, but GDP is increasing beyond this 20 rupees was increased from taxes. So government is trying to increase the taxes or they are trying to reduce the subsidies. Yes, very good, Malini, you are correct. So tax, what government is collecting is being increased. That's why GDP is increasing, but not the actual production is not being produced. So that was the criticism. Many have come, uh, you know, many have criticized that you are just, uh, you know, increasing the taxes and reducing the subsidies, but the actual value addition is not happening. That's why it should reflect at the GVA itself. So if there is discrepancy means you are not producing but you are collecting more taxes, okay? So this is what the criticism was from government. You can see the data. This data is not very important, but try to understand it. This quarter, 2023-24, right? We are in the third quarter. The financial year starts from April 1 of every year, that is 2023, you can say, stays till March 31. 2024, this year. So April 1, 2023 to March 31, 2024. So we, we got the third quarter results, okay? So till December, October, November, December. You can see here, GVA is only 6.5 and GDP is 8.4. In the before years, it was very minimal. You can observe here, all these figures, the difference is very minimal. But now, 
there is a 1.9% difference is there. That means you are not producing but you are just increasing the taxes and reducing the subsidies. So that is not a good for economy. That's what the economist has said. Right? You no need to worry about all this data. Just try to understand that manufacturing sector is performing well. It has seen 11.6 growth and agriculture is not performing well in the last quarter. So that basic level is sufficient. Okay? Now the economist has said that there was a sharp rise in net taxes and fall in subsidies. That's why there is a higher GDP and lesser GVA. Right? So this is the criticism. Any doubts in this? Any doubts in this? We have discussed what we have discussed here in this article. We have seen the context that there is a significant GDP growth in the last quarter. But in GVA there was no growth. We have uh, able to explain what is GDP at uh, factor cost, basic price and then market price. And also we have seen production taxes and product taxes. And gross value addition, GDP difference we have seen. And then there was a taxes increase and less of subsidies. That's why there is a discrepancy. right? So that is about this article. Next article. Yeah. So next article. Any doubts? Okay. Thank you. Uh, next article is Andhra Pradesh government has accorded state festival status to Paruveta Utsavam at Ahobilam. Okay, this festival is happening in a uh, town called as Ahobilam, which is located in Nandiyal district of Andhra Pradesh. Paruveta Utsavam was state festival. Now, let's understand the features of the festival. Okay, that is important for our exam. Now, uh, just state is also important, of course. Which state has recently declared Paruveta Utsavam as a state festival? That is also important. We will also know what is this festival and what is Ahobilam famous for. That's how the questions will be framed you need to not just specifically focus on the given content but you need to have a broader mind you need to cover all the elements that was there in news okay newspapers won't explain you the hobilam region importance they won't explain you the features of parveta utsavam they will just make the context that's all we need to explore the rest of the things for our exams okay next so the about the festival this is the annual mock hunting festival so you know hunting festival, treasure hunts, isn't it? So there are treasure hunts like thing and there is such local level. God will go and hunt the uh, like you know mischievous elements in the forest. So something like that. It is a mock hunting festival being celebrated at Narsimha Swami temple Ahobilam. This is very very important and this temple has built much earlier. So Vijayanagaras were able to construct that. Even before that we have Chalukyas and all. Right? So this festival is celebrated in Narsimha Swami temple at Ahobilam, Andhra Pradesh. And there is a communal harmony where Hindus, Muslims, Christians, tribes, everyone will participate locally in this festival. It is not like a, even though it is related to the Lord Vishnu, but all the communities follow in this festival. Okay? And these are attributed to Chenchu tribes. Chenchu tribes. We will also see about the Chenchu tribes. But this festival is attributed mainly to the Chenchu tribes. The god is taken to all the hamlets in that region where Chenchu tribes are residing. And Chenchu tribes try to protect the surrounding, like whoever are there, some mischievous things are there around the temple. So they visualize like that and they try to throw arrows in a virtual manner. It is not like directly throwing. It is an act like festival. Okay. So these people try to protect the god from the demos. Right. So that is how the festival is celebrated. Now, we need to know about the Chenchu tribes as well. The questions are already asked uh, many times. To which region they are inhabited? They are inhabited in Nallamala Hills, in Andhra Pradesh, Rayal Sima region. Okay? And then, uh, this, uh, they are semi-nomadic. -no Nomadic means moving from one place to other place. So these are origin, these tribes are origin to Andhra Pradesh, but they keep moving from one place to other place. Okay? And they mainly depend on hunting and food gathering rather than doing agriculture or any other activities. They are mainly focusing on hunting and food gathering. They are also part of particularly vulnerable tribes. We will see in the next few articles about PVDGs as well. Before also we have seen. And this is one of the most particularly vulnerable tribe. That means their population are declining. Okay? So this is about the Chenchu tribes. Now let's understand or let's know the facts about Ahobilam as well. This is present in uh, Nandiyal district of Andhra Pradesh. 
in between the eastern guards very very important this is located in eastern guards and there are nine such temples nine group of temples built by vijayanagaras and some temples were even built before that by eastern chalukyas it is the worshiping place of narasimha a vishnu avatar okay so narasimha a vishnu avatar was prayed there uh, so there are nine group of temples as i said and these temples were mainly attributed to vijayanagara kings who ruled in the andhra telangana region and some parts of karnataka as well ampi right so these are the facts about the temple any doubts okay we have seen a lot of facts as well as what is the festival and all these are all factual in nature you need to remember next article pm janjati adivas nyay maha abhiyan so pm janman mostly in lower level of exams they will directly ask pm janman okay so know the full form as well and why we have taken this article in the newspaper the hindu yesterday's edition not today's edition but yesterday saturday's edition they have said that the scheme being launched for these tribes by the central government was slowing down because of lack of data you all know tribes are residing in the uh, very hilly uh, hamlets and it is difficult to collect the information about the families or to whom give uh, to whom to be given the benefits all these things becomes complex that's why an article was mentioned in the hindu now our duty is to know about the scheme that is how the questions can be framed about this scheme the scheme mainly aimed at upgrading or upgrading the livelihood of the particularly vulnerable tribes there are more than 700 tribal groups in india out of that there are 75 groups which are critically vulnerable that means their education their population growth is decre decreasing their health is also degrading they are being sidelined from the main society whatever the reservations that are being given are cornered by certain tribes and not this tribes right so that's why government has launched with uh, launched a scheme uh, called as pm janman through that they are going to provide all basic facilities like clean drinking water electricity sanitation telecom connectivity all these things are going to be provided to the 75 particularly vulnerable tribes okay and some schemes are completely funded by central government central sector schemes because within this we have number of other sub components clean water electricity all these things are there so some schemes are being completely funded by central government some schemes are supported uh, centrally sponsored schemes like 60% is funded by central government and 40% has to be uh, spent by the state governments right so this is the objective you need to know the basic objective when you are learning the schemes after that there will be some facts of course that you need to learn it was launched last year november 15th 2023 in jharkhand okay so this was the time when prime minister has launched this the total funding will be around 24000 crore to give all the you know sub components like housing clean water all these things so total 24000 crores are being spent and how many areas they have identified this is also important 11 areas like housing sanitation uh, electricity telecom connectivity such type of things 11 are identified and nine ministries are coordinating this scheme okay the the scheme is managed by ministry of tribal affairs but it is coordinating with the nine ministries like housing mi drinking water ministry so such uh, ministries are being involved as well okay initially it was made available with 15000 crores as of now under development action plan for scheduled tribes already there was an action plan from the central government to focus the development of the tribals so under the schemes already 15000 crores was launched and the overall scheme is under pradhan mantri particularly vulnerable tribal groups development mission this is just an action plan but this is the broad scheme which was launched in last year budget under this scheme the pv uh, janman is being implemented right so these are all facts that you need to remember for the exam now you may ask sir who are particularly vulnerable tribes and how many are there so that is also very important that also i'm going to discuss okay now before going into uh, how many groups are there and all let's understand how they are identified there are more than 700 tribal groups now in india but why only 75 but only why 75 because government has kept certain criteria 
that population should, should be stagnant. That is, there is no increase in population of this particular tribe as well as they are declining. Either they are stagnant or they are declining. Second one is they don't have technology. They are solely depend on the pre-agriculture. That means hunting and gathering and all. They are not involved in the mainstream economy. Literacy level extremely low. So usually India has a literacy rate of 75%. But if you see tribes, certain tribes have 70%, 60% and certain tribes have 10% also, less than 10%. So those uh, who are ha having very extremely low literacy rates, they are also considered into PVTs. And then economy, very subsistence level, just for consumption. They are not uh, producing for selling it off. They are just producing for consumption purpose. So these conditions, if satisfied, out of 700, 75 tri such tribes are identified, particularly vulnerable tribal groups. Okay. Now, let's understand some facts related to this. This was launched in 1975. So this will be also be asked in the exam when it was launched. 1975. So initially 52 groups were identified, but now it came to 75 tribes. Right. So total 75 are there, and they may also ask which in which states are all. It is higher. So if you identify here, Odisha has 13 and which is the highest followed by Andhra Pradesh. Factual things, very important. And this PVTG is spread across 18 states and one union territory that is Andaman Nicobar. Okay, so total five are there. So eight states, we don't have uh, these, these states as well as these states. So some states, we don't have any particularly vulnerable tribal groups. Okay, so total 18 states and one un union territory are there. These are all facts that I have discussed. Odisha is having the highest and then uh, out of total STs, there are 75 tribal groups. Factual things are all important. Okay, so that is all about the uh, what we have seen, PM German scheme, the features we have seen, the objective we have seen and then ministries, all the data we have seen. Finally, we have also seen about the PVTGs, the factual things about it. Right. I hope there is no doubt. Let's move to the next article. That is corporate tax. So you all know that whatever the, uh, uh, you know, whenever we are earning, when, whoever are earning within country, we need to pay certain amount of tax to the government. Why? Because government want to redistribute the excess money from rich people to the poor people. That's how the equality can be promoted in the economy that is a basic basic aim of collecting the tax to redistribute the money from rich people to the poor people right in form of subsidy schemes or in form of any infrastructure creation that is up to the government right so this corporate tax why we are discussing finance minister has said that uh, there was increase in investments and job creation because of the reduced corporate tax by the india so that's why we have taken this article now what is corporate tax? That is important. You all know we have different entities in our India. We have individuals, we have companies, we have government. So the tax collected from the corporate companies, private companies, either 100% uh, you know, share with the private players or at least even 30, 49%. See, 51% will be usually held by government in PSUs, public sector units. Rest of the 49% is given to private share shareholders. This are, even you can buy the shares, right? So even these companies are hundred percently owned by private companies, are uh, necessarily has to pay corporate tax. But on what basis? How much is paid? On what basis? Corporate tax is always paid based on the profits earned by the company. If you take income tax, it is paid on the total earnings of the company, right? Or uh, total earnings of the individuals. But the corporate tax is paid based on the profits of the company or net income after removing their investments and all, right? This is very, very important point to be remembered. And it is a direct tax. So we have a two types of taxes, direct and indirect. If you are buying a pen, you are indirectly paying a tax, okay, to the government, right? So some intermediary is there who is selling you. But in terms of corporate tax or income tax, which are direct, you are directly paying to the government. So it is a type of direct tax based on the net profit earned by the company, right? And this has to be paid by both private companies as well as public companies. Even if it is 51% shareholding by the government, they have to pay, okay? Until unless 100% owned by government, uh, uh, other things has to be paid according to the Companies Act 1956, right? 
So I think, uh, I, I hope corporate tax is clear now. Then, what are the benefits government has given? What are the changes? Why finance ministry is saying that reduction in corporate tax increase the investments on job creation. So there is a background in 2019. There was an ordinance passed by the president. Ordinance means when parliament is not in the session, the bill is passed by through the president assent. Right? So a, uh, what you call the ordinance was passed to lower the taxes in 2019. This corporate tax was reduced to 22% without any exemptions, of course. Earlier it was around 27, 28%. Okay, it was reduced in 2019 to 22%. That's why companies rush in, I mean, rush towards India. Whenever you need to pay less tax, it is always benefit, isn't it? If government is saying that no need to pay any income tax up to 10 lakhs, so you are happy. Similarly, government if reducing the corporate tax, companies are happy. They will come and invest more, right? So that's how the finance ministry is saying that we have reduced from 27 to 22% and that has benefited the companies and they created the economy as well as jobs, okay? Effective corporate tax, so th there will be some surcharge and cess as well. These are also type of taxes, let me discuss. Surcharge means it is an extra tax collected by the government, but with the, without any specific purpose. It will just collect so that it want to use it in for uh, whenever there is the necessary conditions arise. But in case of cess, this is extra tax collected for specific purposes. For example, agriculture cess, educational cess, whatever this amount collected will have to spend towards that specific sector itself. But surcharge, yes, government can collect, but they can spend anywhere, right? So that is the difference. So, uh, almost like we have education says now, even income tax payer, payers are paying some education says, right? So these, along with corporate tax, was approximately 25.17% as of now. That may be also asked in the exam, right? And those companies who are starting, uh, who are started newly, these are all already existing companies. Whoever has started companies between 2019 to March 2023, the corporate tax was just 15. That means what? New companies will rush towards India. Okay? So these are all the facts that we were, uh, the finance minister were quoting, uh, that we have taken measures to control the, uh, to regulate or to reduce the corporate tax. Right? Now, I just want to quote this in th this year budget, 2000, 2024 budget. This was uh, given by the government. So the total amount of tax collected by the, uh, sorry, total amount of money government is getting every year. Government will receive some money from different sources and government will also do expenditure towards different sources. So out of the receiving sources, 28% is borrowings and liabilities. That means what government has to pay back next year to someone. And the corporate tax percentage was 17%. I'm not going to discuss all these things as corporate tax we are discussing. So corporate tax was 17% as of now, the among the total government receiving. For example, government is receiving 100 crores in one year. Out of that, 17 crores is from corporate tax. That's what it meant. 17% of total money received by government is from corporate tax. Okay. So that is about this article. Any doubts? We have discussed what is corporate tax. And uh, we have seen the some features of corporate tax and the existing conditions. And finally, we have seen the contribution of corporate tax to the government receiving money. Right? Any doubts in this? Okay. Let's move ahead to the next article. It is uh, very factual. Now, there are three more articles. It hardly take five minutes because they are factual in nature and very generic. That means, see, whenever there is a generic statement, you can take it as a correct in the exam. This scheme promotes this, this, this. Like there is no data in the statement. There is no 1%, 2%, nothing. The numericals are completely absent. And it is a generic that it is promoting something. Okay. Unless until there is some irrelevance, you can take it as a correct statement. Right. National Urban Cooperative. National Urban Cooperative Finance and Development Cooperation Limited. Full form also need to be remembered if you are writing a lower level of exams. Okay. National Urban Cooperative Finance Development Corporation Limited. Now, we have, uh, we have created separate cooperative ministry, you all know, a year before under, uh, now it is being headed by Amit Shah. Uh, he is also the Home Minister. Right. So, to create, to tackle 
or to keep all the urban cooperative banks at one place. Now, we have a segregated. Different states have different urban cooperative bodies. Some are regulated by the state. Some are regulated by RBI. Some are even guided by central government. So there is a lot of complexity in the regulation of urban uh, cooperative banks. So to handle them at, at one place, a complete separate organization was launched. National Urban Cooperative Finance and Development Corporation Limited. So this will also give loans to the urban cooperative banks. Because that will rotate the money, that will encourage the money to, uh, to the companies to invest. They will go and take some loans at the lower level, farmers or poultry. So they usually take loans from cooperatives. And if there is no money in the cooperatives, then who will support? So government has to come into the picture. That's why they have launched. It is a non-banking financial company, NBFC. That means it is not a bank, but it is a type of bank with which no need to uh, maintain the uh, uh, CRRL, there are a lot of concepts. So it is not exactly a bank, but just it aims to give some loans, okay? It won't take any deposits, but it will give loans whenever there is necessary and it will come collect some interest rate. That's how it works, right? So this was uh, launched. It is an umbrella body for all cooperative banks, as I said. The goal is self-reliant in India. You all know farmers get very less uh, loan support, especially they are take from intermediaries, the Jamindars, the Bajais, right? So they take and they exploit the farmers. Government is trying to uh, reduce that. The farmers can directly take loans from cooperatives and they can generate in income and then they can pay back, right? So that is the self-reliant India, right? And also the uh, NBFC, that is NUCF uh, DC, will promote modernization in urban banks. It also allows the engagement between the banks. They will discuss what is measures can be taken, what are success stories, and then accordingly they can implement. So these are all generic points. Just understand the role of NUCFDC. So that will be sufficient. Under which ministry, they may ask, it is under Ministry of Cooperatives. Next, a very interesting and very important article, that is Hangul, also called as Kashmir's Tag. Kashmir stag, okay? It is a deer, uh, it is a type of deer itself. But why this is in news? This was in the Hindu uh, today itself. It was mentioned that these numbers are going to increase in the next coming one year because of a healthy mating seasons. In the last one year, the healthy mating season has happened in these regions and these numbers are about to touch 300. Now they are around 150, 160, and they are listed as critically endangered. That means very, uh, they are in very critical condition, and IUCN categorized that as a critically endangered, right? So it is uh, good news that uh, the mating season was healthier one, right? But that does not stop there. We need to know what is Angul, what is the uh, spread in India, where they are located, what is the status also, we need to know, okay? So these are subspecies of Central Asian red deer. This may be also asked in the statement. So this belongs to the family of Central Asia red deer. This particular deer belongs to this family. And they are endemic to Kashmir region. Where they are found is very, very important. Whenever you are doing species, whether plant or animal species, you need to know where they are distributed, where they are located in the India. So this is located in the Kashmir region, right? So they are usually found in dense riverine forest. Dense forest means with a thick greenery and also have rivers which are passing through it so that water is available. So that is the condition and uh, they are usually found as of now in India, Jammu Kashmir and northern part of Himachal Pradesh. Jammu Kashmir, Ladakh and Hima, uh, Himachal Pradesh is connected at one place. So northern Himachal Pradesh and Jammu Kashmir, it is widely found. And the main national park which is holding the Hangul is Dachigam National Park located in Jammu Kashmir, okay? Dachigam National Park. So they may ask you, Dachigam National Park is popular for what? For Hangul species, right? So that is important. Also, it is located in Vovera Aru Wildlife Sanctuary in South Kashmir. This is also important. I can remember one question uh, about uh, some species and they have given four national parks and where it is located in UPSC itself. So that's how you need to know where, what are all the regions, what are all the national parks that a species can be found. Not only in Dachikam National Park, it is also found in Overa Aru Wildlife Sanctuary in Kashmir, South Kashmir region. 
and it is listed as critically endangered. I have already told this. Jammu Kashmir has launched Project Hangul in 1970 itself to protect the species and we are still following it. The number hasn't significantly increased. So the article which published that their number is going to increase is a very good uh, what you call uh, news for the environmentalists, right? So that is about this article. Next one, open network for digital commerce. We have uh, one more article after this. Uh, this is a little bit, you know, we have already discussed in one of the sessions. Anyway, we are discussing again because it is in news. And why it is there in news? Almost 5,000 out of 8,000 registered farmer producer organizations. We will see about this also, don't worry. These organizations has joined open network for digital commerce. That's why it is there in news. Now what we have to learn? What is open network for digital commerce that we need to know? And we also need to know about farmer producer organization and why they have joined this network. What is the benefit? Those are all the things that we need to know, right? First, we will see what is open network for digital commerce. Let's understand. Now, if you want to buy online, you will mostly go either to Amazon or Flipkart. Right? So you don't have other options and your data is also stored. Data is also being regulated because Amazon, for example, is not an Indian company. Right? Of course, Flipkart is an Indian company, some shares with the foreign holders. But uh, because of this, we don't have a lot of freedom to buy. And the local products are also not being published in those uh, what you call e-commerce website because Amazon asks 20%, 30% of commission from the total profit. So that is not a good for Indians, isn't it? So government itself is creating a separate e-commerce where every all the e-commerce apps will be available at one place. At a single place, in a single app, they can see different, different apps at single go. So the customers can see and they can buy whichever is lesser and whichever they felt is very good quality. And if you want to support the local goods, you will also see that this is made in India, this is made in China. So like that, everything will be kept at one place under the government. Government itself is a created open network for digital commerce. So you can see all these things, whatever goods that you want to buy. So here, the local goods are also promoted. Take examples of our uh, saris, Kondapalli uh, toys. These are all losing their value because Chinese toys and e-commerce are... Uh, just pub, uh, you know promoting the international uh, goods right so to overcome this challenge to reduce the autocracy of the e-commerce websites and then to promote the local products government has launched open network for digital commerce so that is the mechanism okay that's how it works and it is being launched by department for promotion of industry and internal trade under ministry of commerce this is very very important this is being handling the network right now, government has, government has allowed this FP was farmer producer organization, almost 5,000 has launched. That means what? Whatever farmers who, who are going to produce, this organization going to produce certain goods, they can directly keep in open network for digital commerce without help of Amazon Flipkart. They don't need to pay any commission also because this is government website. So it is encouraging the local goods, right? Without any commissions. You all know, the main aim is, uh, I have already said, that to reduce the monopoly and then promote digitalization and then local goods. So all these things are uh, uh, the aim of the project. Now we need to know what are all, what is actually farmer produce organizations. In India, most of the farmers have very less land, like one hectare, one and a half, or even less than one hectare. So they don't know the cost efficiency. They need to take a lot of costs to produce certain goods. But if all the farmers at the local level who are having small lands come together and then buy in a bulk to uh, you know do the agriculture, which is a good thing, right? So the cost efficiency will increase. To encourage this, the government has come up with farmer producer organization. So these uh, like can be a company, small companies or a groups or self-help groups which can come together and they can produce goods and then they can sell in the markets. So it reduces the burden on the individual farmers, especially for poor farmers, right? So this is a registered company or a cooperative where it can pool farmers and then they can promote the production in a bulk manner. That is all about the mechanism of farmer producer organization. And this is being handled by 
small farmer agri, uh, agri uh, business consortium it is a body under ministry of agriculture this is also important as how you have remembered the department of promotion of industry is handling this you need to remember that small farmers agri, agri business consortium is handling this farmer producer organization it, under ministry of agriculture right so that is about the facts next article last article for today swachhata green leaf rating initiative swachhata green leaf rating initiative and why we have taken this article this is taken from pib and the previous one also has taken from pib itself there is a lot of articles three four articles we have taken from pib okay so department of drinking water and sanitation in collaboration with ministry of tourism has launched this initiative so that's why we have taken this this was a few days back itself it was launched again it was uh, officially uh, kept forward by the respective ministries two ministries are important department of drinking water and sanitation in collaboration with the ministry of tourism has launched swachhata green leaf rating initiative now we will see what actually is swachhata green leaf initiative this is a collaboration between ministry of tourism and drinking water and the launched in yeah so this is launched in 2023 november this will rate this will rate the hospitality facilities hospitality means where you are, wherever you are visiting how they are receiving you naturally how they are receiving so in certain states it will be very safe in certain place it is not very good uh, about drinking water all the sanitation there so they are going to rate the tourist places based on ratings like you got 5 out of 5 you got 4.5 you got 3.5 so based on that they are going to encourage the tourism places across india to maintain cleanliness as well as a clean drinking water so that is the objective of ratings this rating system the main aim is to prevent water pollution or the pollution in the water bodies right so if pollution is reduced in the water body so drinking water also becomes safer that is the main objective and this is a voluntary rating system this is not like everyone has to be rated there is no such thing it is a voluntary rating but before that what i will do i will orient that means there will be some guidelines which government will give so i will try to pa patch up i mean the state governments or the local bodies will try to orient all these existing condition in my area to the rules given by government after that i will declare myself that yes i am ready i have maintained the cleanliness my region is clean and finally verification will be done done by government and they will give the rating right so indirectly it is promoting tourism wherever the places which are cleanly and safe are always being attracted uh, towards the people right so that's what the mechanism about this rating right any doubts any doubts now uh, if not then we will move to the factual pointers there are three facts which are important for our exam first one indo malaysia naval exercise named samudra lakshmana it has started on february 28 and it is uh, it has ended yesterday that is march 2nd the name is important and it is not a military or air force it is a naval exercise and what is the aim to strengthen the bond and enhance interoperability between india and maldives uh, sorry india and uh, what is malaysia navies okay malaysia is located in the southeast asia which is a uh, just right side of the andaman so between these two navies there was a navy exercise next one geological survey of india geological survey of india has discovered the new sea slug sea slug means a species a marine invertebrates that means they don't have vertebrate the bone back, backbone is absent so invertebrates which are located in the sea so the new species has been discovered by the geological uh, survey of india and it was named with our pre uh, president name draupadi murmu you all know right our honorable president so the name was given with half name from the president so the full name is melanochelms draupadi so these are the species and they are located on the coast of odisha and west bengal this place are also important where was recently Uh, named uh, this species was found so this is also important fact next today we are celebrating world wildlife day very very uh, important 
wildlife is very important, right? So that's why the days will be asked in the exam. World Wildlife Day is being celebrated on March 3. And what is the aim? Very generic to uh, pro protect the environment. So there is an urgent need to protect the environment. So to encourage or to get aware among the people, we are celebrating it. And the theme is connecting people and planet. Exploring digital innovation in wildlife conservation. So just remember what is the main theme of this year they may ask what is the feature it is digital innovation in wildlife protection so that is the theme of this year and it was first launched with uh, you know proposal from thailand sometimes this was also asked which who which country has promoted environment day yoga day which india has done so that also been asked so thailand has promoted or put forward this proposal and it was accepted and implemented since 2013 right so these are all the uh, you know important news for yesterday and today. Now those who are listening this class should answer the questions because you it tells us like uh, whether you are understanding or not, right? So let's go forward with the first question. Consider the following statements about fuel cells. We have seen fuel cells, isn't it? We have a hard discussion in the first article. A fuel cell is a device that converts electric potential energy into mechanical energy. That is the first statement. Second statement, vehicles using hydrogen fuel cells only emit water vapor and warm air. That is the second statement. Like a battery electric vehicle fuel cell, uh, a battery vehicle fuel cell electric vehicles can also store energy so this is the uh, what you call uh, two statements okay there was some miscrevency let me reframe the statements two and three only okay two and three only two only one only and one two and three okay now tell me the answer. This may be some discrepancy I can found. So 2 and 3 only, 2 only, 1 only, 1, 2 and 3. So what is the answer? A is 2 and 3 only, B is 2 only, uh, C 1 only and D is 1, 2, 3. Okay. So let me uh, go with the uh, readings. First, a fuel cell device that converts electrical potential energy into mechanical energy. No. It converts chemical energy into electrical energy. That's what we have seen. Right. First statement is wrong, right? So you can remove this. Now second statement, vehicles using hydrogen fuel cells only emit water vapor and warm air. There is no CO2 and any other gases. So second statement should be there. And like battery electric vehicles, fuel electric vehicles can also store energy. No, they cannot store. It is hydrogen gas is directly given and it reactions automatically happens. So the energy is pro uh, released. So third statement is wrong. Yes, Malini, very good. I'm expecting uh, only few will be able to, I mean, people will be able to answer wrong option. But yes, you are correct. Answer is two only. Okay. So that is the first question. Second question, what is the objective of Swachata Green Leaf Rating Initiative? We have seen this as well. What is the objective of Swachata Green Leaf Rating Initiative? First one, to improve contribution of tourism sector to GDP, to prevent pollution in water bodies, to enhance efficiency of power utility in commercial buildings, to access, to assess a building based on its predicted performance over its entire life cycle. Anyone? So this is very important scheme because it was recently launched. So you, whatever exams you are going to write, you will face this question. Okay. Right. No, it is not related to any uh, GDP. There, there is already a uh, you know, clue, rating. To enhance efficiency of power utility, no. Building based on its predictive performance. We have seen to uh, prevent pollution in water bodies. Yes, you are correct again. Malni, answer is B. To uh, what you call promote the hospitality in the tourist places and also to prevent pollution in water bodies. Okay. Next one, what is the nature of corporate tax in India? This is a little bit analytical question. The tax to be paid by the companies is based on their investments. The tax paid by the companies are indirect nature. 
Companies paying corporate tax should pay along with minimum alternate tax. The tax has a direct impact on companies earning. So what is the nature of corporate tax they are asking? Now tell me. This is a, this is a little bit analytical question. So let's go ahead. The tax to be paid by the companies is based on their investments. No, why will they will they levy based on the investments, right? It, it disencourages the companies. The tax paid by the companies are indirect nature. No, corporate tax is not a indirect nature. They are directly given to the government, right? So not based on the investments and not the direct nature. Companies paying corporate tax should pay along with the minimum alternate tax. No, there is no such condition. Companies who are pro giving, I mean, pro uh, paying the corporate tax, they no need to even pay minimum alternate tax. Only those companies who are taking loopholes from the uh, rules and exempting the corporate tax are will be asked to pay minimum uh, alternate tax. The tax has a direct impact on companies' earning. Yes. So whatever the profits, earnings that you are going to do will be how to give certain part to the government. So if some company is earning more, it has a direct impact. They need to pay more to the government. If they are earning less, they need to pay less to the government. So option D is the answer Okay, for this question. This is a little bit tricky question. You need to understand the context or the meaning, then you can answer it. Okay, next, in which of the following regions in India one can see Hangul in its natural habitats. Fourth question. Northeast Himalayas, Western Ghats, Central Highlands of Deccan region, Greater Himalayas. This is a simple question. I am expecting uh, you know, most of you to answer. Okay, we have seen this at least, uh, you know, you know that it is the state animal of Jammu Kashmir. So why will Western Ghats come into the picture? You should eliminate this option. And then Deccan region is also wrong. This is located in the peninsular India. So these two options should be completely removed. And then Northeast Himalayas means northern part of India, right? So it is uh, northeast that means uh, the Arunachal Pradesh, Assam and all. So this is also wrong. We have seen that this is the state animal of Jammu Kashmir. It is located in Himachal Pradesh and all. So answer is greater Himalayas. So in India, if you see this is an India, Indian map for example, assume. So greater Himalayas are located in this region, Jammu Kashmir uh, and some part of uh, Uttarakhand and then towards a little bit Nepal, Bhutan as well. So answer is D, greater Himalayas. Okay, not A. Last question for today. Which of the following statements with respect to Pradhan Mantri Janjati Adivas Nyay Maha Abhiyan PM Janman is correct? Is are correct. First statement, the scheme aims to provide pakka house, piped water supply and roads for particular vulnerable tribes. It focuses on 11 critical interventions through 9 ministries including Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Ministry of Tribal Affairs will set up Oish Wellness Center and Oish facilities will be extended to particular vulnerable tribes through mobile medication units. So this is uh, very uh, generic, but yes, you need to know. Certain numbers are there. See, whenever you are reading statement-based questions, if there is numericals, try to identify them and find the logic if there is any possibility to, to change these numbers, right? So first one is correct. We have seen that the main aim is to provide drinking water, pakka houses to the particular vulnerable tribes. And total 11 critical areas we have seen this and also 9 ministries including Ministry of Tribes. So 1 and 2 should be there. Third statement, yes, it will set up Oish wellness centers as well. That's what the scheme said. We did not discuss this particular point, but yes, what is the logic? Of, I mean, if you can eliminate. There is, this is good thing only, right? Providing Oish wellness centers. So answer is uh, 1, 2 and 3. Okay. So answer is D. 5 is not B, uh, this is also correct, right? Third statement is also correct because we are providing them good health or the uh, Aish health, right? So that is about today's session. So thanks a lot for watching. Tomorrow evening again we will have a session at 6 o'clock, right? So as yesterday we did not have a session. Today I have taken uh, the extra class, right? 
So we will have such session even if you are missing one or two days because of other reasons, I will take. At least on recording basis, I will give. So you, you are not going to miss anything if you are following the classes, right? So thanks a lot for the support and have a great Sunday evening. Thank you.